Chapter 4 is on network access. Just a little caveat before we get started. The actual labs you will not be able to complete as an online student. You will need to review the information, familiarize yourself with the information in those lab documents, but you're not going to be able to create a cable and submit it for uh, grading as an online student. Chapter 4, Network Access. Just a short introduction to the chapter. Uh, to support our communication, the OSI model divides the function of a data network into layers. Now remember from Chapter 3, we discussed what the OSI model is, along with the TCP IP model. Each layer works with the layers above it and below it in order to transmit data. And two of the layers in the OSI model uh, are so closely tied that in the TCP IP model, they're considered just one layer. And the two OSI models that are looked at as one in TCP IP are the data link layer and the physical layer. On your sending device, it's the role of the data link layer to prepare your data for transmission and control how that data accesses the physical media. However, the physical layer controls how the data is transmitted onto the physical media by encoding the binary digits that represent data into signals, because through the physical layer it has to be in signal form. Once you get to the receiving end, the physical layer receives the signals across the connecting media, and after decoding the signal back into data, it then sends the data to the data link layer for acceptance and processing. So this chapter is going to go through the different types of media and how these two layers work together. You do not have to complete this activity. If we were in a classroom setting, we would probably go through it. Um, you can look at it and do it if you like, but it's not required for submission. Now, the physical layer. Whether you're connecting your devices to in your home or to the website in another country, before any of that connections and communications can occur, you have to have a physical connection to a local network. And it has to be established. So if you're at home, you're having to go through your home router that then is connected either to your cable provider or through your phone provider in order to get out of your house and out on the internet. Uh, a type of physical connection used is totally dependent upon the setup of your network. The example we see here to the right is a home router. We have the ability to have four Ethernet switch connections. You see you have your internet connection and then there is an embedded wireless antenna in this particular router. So your connection comes in from the outside through the internet port. Then you have four additional ports that you can connect different devices to that would actually be wired devices. And then you have your wireless antenna that you can connect to your router in that form. Here we've actually connected the wired LAN. It comes out of the port of the home router and into your laptop or your PC. You can have switch devices and wireless access points and they're often two separate dedicated devices within a network implementation. However, there are also devices that offer both wired and wireless connectivity such as the router shown here since it does have the embedded wireless antenna in it. Your network interface card, or your NIC as I've referred to in the past, it connects a device to the network. And the Ethernet NICs are used for wired connections, whereas the wireless LAN NICs are used for wireless. Kind of makes sense that the wireless is used for wireless. An end user device may include one or both types of NICs. If you have a laptop, typically it has a NIC for wired, and it may also have your wireless NIC in it as well. Uh, network printers, for example, may only have your Ethernet NIC, 
older PCs may also only have the Ethernet NIC in them as well. Other devices such as tablets and smartphones usually only have the wireless LAN NIC and must use a wireless connection. It would look kind of strange to plug your wireless phone into something wired. Not all physical connections are equal in terms of the performance level when connecting it to a network. So keep that in mind when you're working with different devices. All wireless devices must share access to the airwaves connecting to the wireless access point. So there's more than one device at a time trying to access that point. Each wire device has its own separate communication channel over the ethernet cable. We have our physical layer protocols to look at. Uh, the purpose of the physical layer through the OSI model provides the means to transport the bits that make up a data link layer frame across the network media. And this layer accepts a complete frame from the data link layer and encodes it with a series of signals that are transmitted onto the local media. Uh, the encoded bits that compromise a frame are received by either an end device or an intermediate device. It may have to go through a router or multiple routers before it finally reaches its destination. The process that the data undergoes has a source node to a destination node. Uh, the user data is seg segmented into transport layer, then it's placed into packets by the network layer, and further encapsulations as frames by the data link layer. Then we get to the physical layer and that will encode the frames and creates the electrical, optical, or radio wave depending on what media it's going across uh, for each frame. These signals are then sent across the media one at a time and then the destination node physical layer will receive and retrieve those informations from the media. It restores them to their bit representation and passes the bits up the data link layer as a complete frame. So each piece has its own purpose. There's three basic forms of network media. Uh, you have your copper cable and the copper cable signals are patterns of electrical pulses. You have your fiber optic cable and those signals are patterns of light. Then finally we have wireless and those signals are patterns of microwave transmissions. And the figures to your right there are demonstrating how these signals uh, are represented and how they occur. The protocols and operations of the upper OSI layers are performed in software designed by software engineers and computer scientists. For example, the services and protocols in the TCPIP suite are defined by the Internet Engineering Task Force in the RFCs, as you see in Figure 1 to your right. The physical layer consists of your electrical circuitry, your media, your connectors, and they're developed by engineers. It's appropriate that the standards governing this hardware are defined by the relevant electrical and communication engineering organizations. And remember, if we're using the organizations in order to do, use this, then everybody's on the same playing field and things are set up correctly so everybody can talk and get along. Figure 2 lists the major contributors and some of their relevant physical layer standards. So if I move to, to Figure 2, you'll see that the OSI and the networking standards that they govern. You've got EITIA, and then we have the IEEE down here. That's where we're going to look at the Ethernet and the wireless and our Bluetooth. This is one of the labs that you just need to review the information that is provided in the document and you will not be able to actually do the lab live online. The physical layer standards address three functional areas. Okay, So we have the physical components and the physical components are the electrical hardware device, the media, and the other connectors that transmit and carry signals 
um, to represent the bits. Hardware components such as your NIC, your interface and your connectors, your cable materials, and cable designs are all specified in standards associated with the physical layer. The various ports and interfaces on a Cisco 1941 router are also examples of a physical component with specific connectors and pinouts resulting from standards. So these standards help us set up our equipment and ensure that our equipment has the necessary components and functionality in order for us to communicate across a large area of um, vendors. Encoding or aligning coding is a method of converting a stream of data into predefined code. And these codes are groupings of bits used to provide a predictable pattern that can be recognized by both the sender and the receiver. In the case, in the case of networking, encoding is a pattern of voltage or current used to represent bits. And these are zeros and ones. These zeros and ones are going to come into play further on into this course and you will use bits throughout the entirety of the Cisco Academy. In addition to creating codes for data and coding methods at the physical layer may also provide codes for control purposes such as identifying the beginning and the end of the frame because remember your conversation or your information is going through in packets and these packets are segmented into frames so that the network can handle it and it's not sending it as one large message but bits of pieces of messages. Common network encoding methods include um, Manchester encoding and that's where a zero is represented by a high to low voltage transition and a one is represented as a low to high voltage. You have non return to zero <clears throat> and this is a common means of encoding data that has two states turned term zero and one and no neutral or rest position and a zero may be represented by one voltage level on the media and one might be represented by a different voltage on the media. Just a side note that faster data rates require more complex encoding such as 4B, 5B. However, explanations of these methods is beyond the scope of this course. You, you will hear that quite often throughout this course is they will mention a bit of information and then they're going to tell you that it's beyond the scope of this course. Don't let that bother you. Uh, you can do more research on it if you like, but typically those topics will be covered in subsequent courses throughout the Academy. Next we have signaling and this is the physical layer must generate the electrical, optical, or the wild, wireless signal depending on how it's being transmitted and that represents ones and zeros on the media. And the method of representing the bits is called signaling method. Uh, the physical layer standards must be defined with a type of signal that represents a one and what type of signal re represents a zero. And this can be as simple as a change in the level of the electrical signal or optical pulse. For example, a long pulse might represent a one whereas a short pulse would represent a zero. Signals can be transmitted in one of two ways. You either have asynchronous, and this is where the data signals are transmitted without an associated clock signal. Uh, the time space in between the data characters or blocks may be arbitrary uh, duration, meaning that spacing is not standardized. Uh, therefore, frames require stop and stop indicator flags. Uh, synchronization. Synchronous is data signals, signals are sent along with a clock signal which occurs at evenly spaced time durations referred to as the bit time. Finally, there are many ways to transmit these signals. Some of the common ways or the ones that you may be used to hearing about is the frequency modulation or FM. It's a method of transmission in which the carrier frequency varies in accordance with the signal. You have AM, which is amplitude modulation, and it's a transmission technique in which the amplitude 
of the carrier varies in accordance with the signal. And then finally we have pulse coded modulation. And that's a technique in which an analog signal, such as a voice, is converted into a digital signal by sampling the signal's amplitude and expressing the different amplitudes as a binary number. Uh, the sampling rate must be at least twice the highest frequency in the signal. Uh, here you can see in figure one, we have the media, you have your physical component components, you have the frame encoding technique and the signaling method. And in image two here, you see your modulation plus your carrier signal for the FM equals your FM signal. And then the lower one shows you the amplitude modulation, just so that you can understand and see the differences there. Some fundamental principles of layer one, uh, the Different physical media supported supports the transfer of bits at different speeds. And when I say layer one, that's the physical layer in the OSI model. Remember, they're numbered. Bandwidth is the capacity of your medium to carry data. And digital bandwidth measures the amount of data that can flow from one place to another in a given amount of time. Bandwidth is typically measured in kilobits per second or megabits per second. The practical bandwidth of a network is determined by a combination of factors. You're going to have to look at the properties of the physical media that you're using, plus the technologies chosen for signaling and detecting network signals. Uh, your physical media properties, your current technologies, and the laws of physics all play a role in determining available bandwidth. Familiarize yourself with the units of bandwidth. You may see these referred to on future exams. Throughput is the measure of the transfer of bits across the media over a given period of time. And due to a number of factors, throughput usually does not match the specified bandwidth in the physical layer implementation uh, just different things come into play here. You may have uh, a lot of traffic on your network. Uh, it depends on what type of traffic you have. You can have some lat latency occurring. Um, just refers to the amount of time plus your delays that occur. Uh, there's many online speed tests that can reveal the throughput of the internet connection. To figure um, provides to your right provides a sample result from a speed test. One of the methods that I use to determine the speed of my uh, connection is called speedtest.net and you can run the test to see what your throughput is, what your download speed, how f fast you're pinging, and your upload speed. Uh, it just takes a few minutes to scan. Uh, you can scan it at several different times if you prefer, if you don't think that your throughput is what you expect it to be. But like I said, it doesn't take long to run the test. And as you can see here, it's already figured out my ping rate, my download speed, and right now is checking my upload speed. Uh, the only thing that's going on on my network right now is I have a wireless connection and I have multiple tabs open in my browser. So it tells me that here is my download speed, here is my upload speed, and they're fairly close. But that's just an example of how that can work. Now let's look a little bit more at the actual physical device itself. Uh, the physical layer provides, produces the representation and groupings of bits as voltage, radio frequency, and light pulses. And then we have different ways that we are going to connect to our device. These specifications guarantees that cables and connectors will function as anticipated with different data link layer implementations. An example, standards for copper media are defined for the type of copper cabling used, your bandwidth for the communication, the type of connector that is being used, 
the pinout and color codes of connections to the media and we'll get more into that here in just a few minutes and then the maximum distance of the media uh, this is important to keep in mind uh, not all media can transmit data at the same length of cable uh, or of your media the example here on the right we have an SHDSL interface we have our management ports here it's this grouping. You may have gigabit Ethernet interfaces. Here is the USB type A connectors. And then here we have our fast Ethernet switch ports. All of these are media that can come in through copper media, but they each have a different type of connector on the end of them. Go through the part one, the physical layer terminology. See what you understand. Remember, you just drag and drop, and then you check to see how things are running. See what your understanding is of the material.